Um, we are going to go now to Councilman Joe Geruso. He, um, he was at the extravaganza. We, I believe we have him on the phone. Can you hear me, Councilman? I can hear you, Devin. Good evening. Good evening. Um, what can you, t you, you said you were at the extravaganza earlier tonight. Can you tell us kind of ab about the mood? What's going on there? Well, I was at the extravaganza. I walked in and all of a sudden my phone blew up between reports of what happened, both from City Hall, my staff, the police, um, the media pulled me aside and said, hey, we want you to come talk about this. Um, I think people are just trying to figure out what happened. The other big issue, too, is remember a lot of the senior leadership for Carnival Cruise are at the very beginning floats. So um, I don't know how much contact the captain or lieutenants have been able to have with the people about the extravaganza and how much longer that's going to go on. But it certainly cast a pall upon the whole evening, and, and people were very concerned about what happened and wanted as much information as they could get. Um, can you, we've been talking just a little bit about the, a lot really, about this rule for no more tandem floats for the rest of the carnival season. Um, did you have any idea that this was going to be implemented tonight? Was this kind of a knee-jerk reaction? And uh, either way, what, what do you think about it? Well, I, I don't know that I call it knee-jerk at this point. Look, I've said before, um, you've had now two deaths in just a couple of days, and it looks like they were both caused um, by uh, tandem floats. I, I really I don't know what other choice the city had. If somebody else died tomorrow or Monday as a result of the tandem float, the city would be getting toasted for having made that decision. Um, and so I think at this point it's better safe than sorry. I understand that people can be upset about that, that they feel like um, that's what that's what Mardi Gras has been all about. But at this point, you have two people who are dead who've been killed. Um, by getting too close to floats. We don't know the circumstances around that. There's only three more days of carnival. We have five parades tomorrow. It just seems like it's better to be safe. You know, this has not happened in decades, and now here we are, what, 72 hours apart, something something like that, um, with two deaths here. What What is, what's your take on that um, as someone who, who represents so many people in the city? Right, I mean, you know, look, I, I, I represent obviously um, the mid-city area in addition to Lakeview, Uptown, Carrollton. And, and my concern for the last few years has been uh, bicycle and pedestrian traffic. You had a couple of things that happened with regards to that um, uh, around Endymion. And so uh, obviously trying to keep that heightened, keep focus on the fact that you don't want people who've been drinking behind the wheel of the car. And OPD made that point really strongly the other day. Uh, that's important. You just don't think that, my gosh, after decades of this happening, I think I saw the last flute was back in the 2000s. As you said, you're going to have two within 72 hours. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that there's, um, do you think, do you anticipate that there might be some changes next year to what we see, uh, not just if this tandem rule lasts, but maybe with barriers, any kind of safety changes that you can foresee happening next carnival year? Well, I think I think the big thing is to see what happened tonight. I know everybody wants to know what are we going to do about it right now. Um, I think I think first we have to get the circumstances of what happened tonight. Um, not clear yet on on that. Um, look, I know that Endymion um, had paid for additional barricades and security. They specifically brought in Jefferson Parish. They had even been talking about um, doing some additional security measures. Um, and, and the other point, Devin, I'd make is remember today is a really tough day logistically for the police. They, uh, they have a crew in, in Algiers. They ride on the West Bank for Nantok. Then you have um, Iris and Tox that are uptown and in Demian that goes through Mid-City. So all of these resources get spread out, and, and I guess the question is going to become, um, you know, how safe can we make it? How do, you, how do you still make sure that people are having a good time? And what can the city and the crews do to better communicate and, and have some safety measures so this doesn't happen again? Mm -hmm. um, my, my final question for you, going into the last three days of Carnival here, do you have any message to people who are either in parades, going to parades, uh, anything that they should keep in mind or that you want them to know? Well, I guess the biggest thing, obviously, is to be careful. Nothing that is thrown from those floats is worth your life. It's, it's you know, plastic and, 
and, and can be replaced, you can't. And obviously, um, there won't be any more tandem flutes, but I think this really is a time for us to be incredibly careful, be incredibly vigilant. Um, we as a city will obviously continue to communicate about that. But I think people need to talk about it themselves and, and know that um, you're out on a parade route, you're there to have a good time. But remember, these are big tractors, big floats, and that things can happen and, and you know, don't put yourself in jeopardy unnecessarily. All right. Councilman Russo, thank you so much for calling in with us. I appreciate it.